now and I'm gonna parallel this now to just just jump into to NIL and in with your book because now we're almost what it's it's almost been like a year. We're coming up on a year and a few months, right? Of of NIL. What have just 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 give me give me your thought? Like what have you seen? Mm -hmm. uh, and you know, do do you think this is still a positive with 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 NIL? Just just just, just yeah. Talk <laughs> yeah 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 yeah. Um... And it kind of segue to you and what you were talking about um, with protecting your livelihood and your legacy. I think for us, when I say us, the black brown communities, we've been I don't want to say we've been taught this, but we're short sighted. We only see things as fast gratification. What can I get now? What can I make now? Well, if I start this business, or I start this brand it's going to pay me X amount of dollars now. And so we we don't invest the time or the money, if necessary, you know, to properly educate ourselves and properly put um, provisions in place that will actually help us to to reap the benefits that we think we want or that we think we're going to see now. <laughs> um, and I, I can go so far in depth of why I feel like that is that is the case. I know we are centuries behind our white brothers and sisters on their family, you know, families having the education and the know-how of creating long-term sustainability and the different vehicles of how to do that. But it doesn't mean that we are inept or incapable, incapable or too inferior to be able to do it because there are black and brown individuals who have been able to do that. So now it's just being able to re-educate ourselves around some things, but also having the confidence to have the real hard conversations with our families and our friends, especially if you happen to be that person um, that have come into a particular fortune or your own ideas and business have helped you to create a fortune. It's your responsibility to have that confidence and to have those real conversations so that you can actually protect the legacy that you have created. Um, and so to segue that with name, image, and likeness, I do think is a good idea, but I, it, it is, it has its problems as do anything. One thing I, one myth I do want to dispel for folks is that name, image, and likeness is not new. <laughs> it's not a new concept. It's something that's been around forever. Um, but as far as it being in the space of college sports and allowing college athletes to monetize on you know their own celebrity it's new in that sense right so traditionally it's athletic mm -hmm. associations and universities the coaches and whomever else everybody but the athlete that have been um paid handsomely because of the i want to say sacrifice and the athleticism of the athlete so now with this new law that has either been enacted in multiple states or proposed in multiple states, it's basically saying that as a student athlete, you do have the right to make money based on your name, your image, and or your likeness, um, but it can't be from your school or someone who's tied to your school. So it has to be you making a deal with a third party. So when we're talking about and I'm just going to sum it up as NIL. So if you guys hear name, image, and likeness, NIL, some people refer to it as NLI because NIL in other languages means none, nothing. <laughs> if you hear Neil, yeah. So you might hear people say NLI. Um, but yeah, so your NIL is essentially your intellectual property rights. And there are multiple states that statutorily already have um, rules on the books to allow you to either license your your rights which we call your publicity rights to a third party or secondary party whomever it may be for um what is the verbiage um for commercial gain so that's really what you're what you know nil is and in some of the statutes if you look at it it will possibly even talk about having an intellectual or publicity right based on state or federal. So if they're talking about state, then you may end up having to also look at your particular state uh, right of publicity if, you, if your state has one to kind of fill in the gaps for that. But essentially that's what it is. Um, I think that there are problems 
because we're dealing with student athletes who for the most part are busy, especially if, if we're talking about popular sport athletes. Um, football is the first one that comes to mind because a lot of us know what the environment is, you know, for football athletes. It's constant practice, constant um, game day, and very little time for anything else. And so um, when we're looking at the time that is available to a student athlete, having a business or creating a brand throws in a, another layer of issues that I don't know if they are technically ready for. But that's also one of the reasons why we have to make sure we properly educate our children um, on communication, on team building, on um, understanding how and when to ask the right questions so you know you got the right person working for you. The one thing that scares me the most about name, image, and likeness is it could create an earlier time frame for athletes to be taken advantage of than their counterparts in the pro in the pros you get what i'm saying um but on the flip side it could do the opposite it could help these athletes to build something that could create a beautiful foundation for their future where they don't have to depend on going pro for now for some athletes who may not get because it's not going to be a majority of athletes who get these huge brand deals um but for those who don't it this is still an opportunity for you and if if you are a student athlete trying to figure out okay do i take advantage of this rule or do i not i would say yes because there's still something called networking and creating relationships <laughs> that mm -hmm. could be worth mm -hmm. more to you than any amount of money especially once you leave college so we know that a lot of athletes, especially popular sport athletes who haven't had time to do an internship or, um, you know, have a particular job or ex ex other extracurricular activities beside their sport, traditionally would graduate or not even graduate without any plans whatsoever, which also means not having real relationships that they could um, I don't want to say monetize, but that they could take advantage of, you know what I'm saying? To at least see what are some opportunities that I could do? Can I call Joe Blow over here and see if maybe, you know, they got an opening in this office. So I, I do think that there are good things that could happen with NIL, but on the flip side, there are a lot of things that could go wrong, but it's also, I feel like it's also responsibility of the athletic associations, the schools, um, to really educate student athletes around all of the parameters, not just a few, not just the things that are going to make the school money, but all of the things so that they can be properly prepared to pretty much step into the shoes of being an entrepreneur. <laughs>